Oh, right, right, right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. It's been a hot minute since we cast the game from this lovely lad down here, the madman himself. It's Santa Claus. It's in the bottom left side of the map. And in the top right, we've got King SC's Montana. And for those who don't know Santa Claus, Santa Claus is basically one of the players out there who we're not quite sure if he is a genius that we don't quite understand uh, or potentially someone who's been dropped on the head a few times when they were little. Uh, we're not really sure. We just know that he's creative, he's weird, and his games are always something special. Always a bit of a treat. Uh, the opponent, Montana, not familiar with this player. Uh, usually, Santi's around the Diamond League on the ladder, and he just does crazy stuff every single game. Uh, so I can't wait to see what he's got in store. This is actually an older replay that he sent me. As you can see, it's the previous map pool but I, uh, from, from at least a few months ago, but I somehow never got around to casting this. It was just sitting there, and I'd, I'd forgotten to take a look at it. So we're going to go in and delve into the dark find of Santa Claus, who's gone for a very early gas and pool. And it looks like Montana, who's going Nexus first. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, these six circlings are going to cause trouble. I mean, Montana sees this. Montana's going to... Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you're going to need to go, like, full wall. And going straight for a cannon plus full wall, probably the best way to play this out. Delay your gases for now, and then you can build an economic advantage off it, but what? You just saw a lair. What the hell is this? Okay, so it's six Zergling. They're gonna kill the probe, but there's a lair already on the way. Santa Claus has something very dirty in mind. Uh, I assume he'll have to take an expansion behind this. Yeah, a few more drones coming out while he's waiting for that lair to come up. And of course, Montana going forge gateways. Oh, we're we putting a cannon in the wall? Oh, please don't do that. There we go. Okay, cannon's a little behind the forge, and it looks like the probe is ready to just pile and block the wall off. There we go. Not too bad there. And it is a complete wall off, so the Zerglings can maybe hit on the wall for a little bit with the cannon finishing in about 15 seconds. That will be solid. Back to probing for Montana. This is actually a very economic opening. Yeah, Montana's going to be going really nicely here. Okay, second cannon goes down as well. That's probably not necessary. A little bit of paranoia for there, there for, uh, for Hannah. Hannah Montana and okay 18 drones coming up what what's the follow-up i don't understand what is this okay are we we're dropping we're dropping yeah we're dropping <laughs> oh he's a dirty little bugger isn't he <laughs> okay so he's gonna try and make a an elevator there i believe and ferry the zerglings across the gap there we go yeah he's gonna do it moves it out of vision and looks like he's gonna set that up infestation pit behind it okay so we're going to see some some form of really weird two-base swarm motion shenanigans. The Lings need to slow down the Protoss because he's way ahead economically. Only had five, six workers. Now you might think, oh, not too bad, but two bases versus and a natural that's not even finished. You give him a minute or two, that's going to get even worse. The first queen hasn't even popped out yet. The Zerglings have loaded up, but Sandy, a little bit slow to get that going. There we go. He's told it to now unload. You'll see what damage he can do. No gas mining, though, for the Protoss player yet, which means, yeah, he's way out of economy, but he's got to keep on pumping things out. And these Zerglings, there's no fighting units out at all because he was relying purely on that wall off to defend. The Zerglings are going to get in there. They're going to go after the probes. Probes can run to the cannon, but two of them do get caught by those Zerglings, which now go into the main. Now, it's only six Zerglings, so you can just A-move this with the probes, and you'll lose a couple, but you'll you'll crush them. But uh, Montana's not fighting! Montana, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And they're not mineral walking either. Is losing four probes to these. It's just six Lings. Yeah, you guys outnumber them. You can, you can win this fight. You... <laughs> Why aren't you fighting? <laughs> it's not that hard to charge, is it? It's six Zerglings. It's not that many. The Sandy's going to run circles around. Montana's finally realized, hey, I can fight this. Took a little bit, though. I think just being shocked by the fact that there's a drop in the base. That early. I think a lot of people just, they've never faced something like that. A Zergling elevated this early. This is crazy. And it's just like so shocking that they freak out a little bit. Tried to load up in the Overlord, but the Overlord was in the wrong position. Um, kind of funny micro for Santa Claus. You can tell he was trying to click the lings to the left, and so he kept running the Overlord away from where it could pick them up. He's going to redrop one Zergling, because as always, Santa Claus prioritizes being an annoying person over anything else. Loads the Zergling back up, picks it up, unloads it. He's going to get one more. No! No, you disgusting. Okay, finally, that extra cannon comes up closer to the mineral line, does defend it. There's a few zealots out. Uh, Montana's still ahead, but three swarm hosts are coming in, and a hive, of course. Uh, it's a four and a half minute hive starting, guys. Well, 420 actually uh santa claus of course no doubt someone I've, I've seen the way he talks both online and in twitch chat and all sorts of things and generally i i'm i, I think he either does way too many psychedelics or he, he smokes a, an ungodly amount of the devil's cabbage um so i wouldn't be surprised if he does tech up at 420 just for the symbolism uh, he's gonna take down that twi wait there's two twilight counts 
Why are there two Twilight Councils building? And they're both depowered. Please cancel those. Um, it looks like oh, back to one base gas, uh, one base mining now from Montana. Santa Claus is on the other side going three gas and burrow because it's eight more Zerglings, burrow. I don't know what we're going to do. Three Zealots are coming across the map. There is nothing to defend that. I guess eight Zerglings popping out and two Queens can defend it. But uh, we'll see what happens. Those Zealots might just pass them by. The Double Twilight Council is coming up. The Swarmhost are just going to keep depowering that, I believe, over and over again and, and hitting these workers. They go back to mining, but there's already time for another wave. And, of course, the Double Dropper Lord bringing in a bit of a secret douchebag maneuver here. These Swarmhosts are going to get right up in there and uh, and throw those Locusts. At yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, Montana with a quick run this time. But the Zealots are going to do the counterattack. Let's see if Santa Claus even realizes he's having fun microing his Locusts right now. Look, he's attacking the pylons. He splits them to attack the pylons. He doesn't notice. Yeah, I, I, I freaking knew it. Oh, he actually noticed way quicker than I thought. Santa Claus is, is geriatric sometimes when it comes to speed. Always focus on screwing with his opponent on the mental side and doing a cutesy play. But, oh, this is really costly. Fighting with those drones, a bit of a mistake. Should have let the Queens do the tanking. He's lost 10 drones now. But he's got Swarmos in the base. Another Ling Drop ready to come in. Gateways in a Dark Shrine trying to be built. Montana says, if I can get Dark Templar out, maybe, just maybe, I can make something happen. Spinecrawler will be building there. For some reason, we've got Vipers out, guys. This is a Viper rush. The Lings, the Swarmos, just a distraction. Santa Claus is rushing two of the fastest Vipers I've ever seen in a one versus one match of StarCraft 2. They're going to be popping out before 6 minutes 30 and no doubt starting to gather energy up in that main base. The Ling Drop comes in, round two is going to start attacking that. The cannons are nearby though, so Sandy needs good micro, which he does not... Oh, he's going to go for the Dark Shrine. He's going to go for the Dark... If he gets the Dark Shrine, that's pretty huge. Swarmhost in the main are borrowed. They could be throwing more Locusts to finish that base off. It'll take a little while. Stalkers are going to try to come up to defend this. I think the Dark Shrine has enough hit points to barely survive. Yeah. Yeah, the Stalkers will clean up those Zerglings. Dark Shrine will survive. Locusts in the main are going to take out that Nexus now. Behind it, Evolution Chamber and a Spore Crawler on the way. He knows that there's Dark Templar, so he's got a bit of detection. A Roach Warren will go down. Ten more Zerglings. And, of course, those Vipers gathering energy by sucking on those extractors. Giving him a little bit of a lick and getting some of those vitamins out of it. Much like uh, when you see, like, a horse or whatever licking one of those, those salt rocks. Uh, Swarm hosts are burrowed up there. Montana has no detection. Starts at a Robo, but that's very exposed. Batteries going down is very smart. Montana could survive this. I really feel like... You might think this is a bad position for Montana. Santa Claus is, is is such a ridiculous human that I really don't think he ever knows how to finish it. Like sometimes it feels almost like Florencio's throwing the game with just how bad his macro is in the follow-up. But this man is building a second spawning pool. So I just want you guys to realize he's making link speed and adrenal glands right now, which is the dumbest set of upgrades you could possibly do. I mean, this man, I, I often feel like his strategy is that he thinks his brain damage is contagious and he wants to spread it to his opponent. <laughs> But hey, we get to see interactions. We don't get to see it in anyone else's games. Vi <laughs> Viper harass. He's going for Viper harass. Guys, that, they are trapped. He's just recall. He's just abducted four probes there behind the gateway. The only way to get them back is recall. <laughs> he recalls them, which means the Vipers need to go home, get more energy, come back and do it again. And I'm pretty sure by then recall will be off cooldown anyway. That is the worst harassment I have ever seen. Eight minute double Viper abducts four probes behind the, the player's own building so they can't mine. Kind of legendary. Hats off to you for doing some weird stuff as always, Santi, but I can't say it's effective. He changes targets at the last second, ensuring that he doesn't kill the robo. Apparently he's been to Florencio Science School and is trying to apply the, uh, the law of spread your damage out to do more total damage because then regeneration happens. Swarmos on the left. He's got a drone out here in the middle. He's making a few ravages right now. A few roaches at home. He's trying to finally make a third base, but Santa Claus just has no economic progression. He's going to go after the Robo. I mean, that's cute and all, but there's already an Observer on the map, and he can just rebuild that. The Lings are going to go down to the Dark Templar. Santa Claus is... I mean, where are his Vipers? Where are those Vipers? He does the fastest Viper rush of all time, comes home, gathers energy, then forgets about the Vipers. <laughs> He's got four ravages, which who knows what they're going to do. He doesn't even have detection here. Guys, he hasn't made an Overseer yet. Wait, wait, wait. He has, but it's at home. He knows there's Dark Templar. He's running in with his Ravages. He kills a probe. He's losing Ravages. Santa Claus right now, drunk at the helm like he always is. And like I said, guys, I'm pretty sure this guy's on shrooms every time he's playing StarCraft. He's like, hey, man, I'm just going to do a Ravager drop 10 minutes into the game. Oh, the Invisible Man's tickling my Ravages. Like, like I, I'm, I don't think... I think you'd be surprised how close that is to his internal monologue while he's playing. 
Santa Claus is... Uh, He's Santa Claus. He's the gift that keeps on giving. Unfortunately, what he gives is mostly weird slash stupid, but we do enjoy it nonetheless because... Oh, oh he's going to get the Dark Templar. Okay, no, he tries to get the Dark Templar. Doesn't quite get it. He's trying to do the uh, the up and down, the in and the out. I don't think he sees the DTs, only the Zealots. Tries to do the load, the unload, the load, the unload. But uh, yeah, that ain't going to work out, buddy. He's building more Swarm Host behind this. Still trying to tilt his opponent out of the game. And to be fair, guys, Montana has suffered severe emotional damage. Still only mining one, one base. Hasn't moved workers down here. The Swarmos are still coming in and annoying him. They're not really killing anything. They really need to be, like, held position out here to start killing these gateways. These gateways are actually really blocking a lot of Santi's harass. Double Viper's going to come in again for round two. As I said, Recall's going to be ready. Is he going to do the exact same recall her uh abduct harassment because all it's gonna do is bait recall i would have loved to see the protoss player forget they have recall i think a lot of protoss players brains would have broken when they saw their probes trapped they would have gone are those just useless units now he's gonna try it again but his vipers aren't positioned correctly he needs to clump those bad boys up he abducts two vipers behind the buildings and do we see recall again? Come on, Montana. You know you want to do it. Stalker's warping in to chase that off. Swarmo's coming in on the bottom right. Guys, there's still no overseer down here. You, you gotta make an overseer, Sandy. What are you doing? He can't see the Dark Templar. They're invisible. This is his vision. He now starts making an overseer as an afterthought. Okay, the Locusts and the Roaches are running after the Stalkers. That's all right. He's doing some fair damage. But the Viper harass. It was creative. It was different. Like everything Santa Claus does. I think we're also realizing why people don't do it. Because it doesn't do any damage. He's up 40 supply, but if he loses all these Swarmos, he's in huge trouble. Montana almost gets baited away, but he does turn around. He goes back. The Swarmos need to throw those Locusts, but they're not ready yet. 12 seconds away. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's he doing? He's throwing Locusts that are landing, trapped in behind the gateways. He's canceled his hatchery for some reason. Or maybe he got focused down. His spores and spines are bleeding out. He's got Lings. Now he's building two Infestors. Oh, my Lord, Sandy Claus. He's got Swarmos on the left. Once again, no Overseer guarding them. And, and the thing is, Montana's cleaning these up. Santa Claus is not... Okay, he's learning. He's learning. He is going to try to run away with those Swarmos, but remember, they're very slow off creep. Stalkers and Charge Zealots are going to chase him down real easy. The Dark Templar do crazy damage when they get on top. The Swarmos secured here to run around aggressively. No, he's trying to run to the safety of the Spines, but they're already bleeding out. They're basically done in this game. The Lings, for those who don't know, have plus one melee, adrenal, and Zergling speed upgrades now. He's going to take a hatchery in the top left corner as well. And, uh, oh my lord, God, I think I'm contracting brain damage from casting this game at this point. There's so many things Santa Claus could do that are good, but he is immune to doing all of them. His opponent, on the other hand, Montana, clearly a good match for him, is making resonating glaives and blink at the same time, because I have two twilights I might as well. It, 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 you know, let me know in the comments. I know, I know it's already happening and half of you have already done it. Type what you think the MMR is of the players in this game. And I'm going to give you a few seconds to do it before I reveal the last time I saw Sandy Claus. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, assume he's playing random. He often plays random. I believe it was almost 4K. <laughs> Maybe his Terran's higher, actually. Maybe that was his Terran. He was like 3.8, 3.9, something like that, which is a uh, high diamond, guys. It's high diamond. <laughs> it's high diamond. Oh, I'm, running. I'm so sorry, Diamond players. I know I don't want this to be reality either. I want this to be Silver League, but it's not. It's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think this is probably him experimenting a bit more. It might not be his most worked out strategy, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is this is at least minimum Diamond 3. I don't think he's ever below Diamond 3. Um, and yet the brains are breaking of him and his opponent at the same time. A bunch of Zealots and DTs coming in. His answer to this is to make a Baneling Nest right now, which does count as Zealots and Dark Templar. He is much like Ferenzo looking for the counter. I mean, he's got this drop in there that did clear out the main, but the third is mining at least a little bit, even if not a lot. It's a 14 minute, nine Dark Templar, 16 Zealot, three Blink Stalker counter attack. Oh, sorry, not Blink, because Blink didn't get finished before it got depowered. These three spines are finally gonna get taken out. Montana doesn't know about the top left base. He's found this one. Montana's all over it though. It takes out both, sp no, one spawning pool falls. That's why he took it. That was the distraction spawning pool, so the other one can still be alive. Intelligent preparation here by Sandy. And I think Sandy's done. He's got three Vipers and two Swarmers. Four Vipers now. And um, I think this is honestly a game where it's like he discovered the Viper. He's like, I'm going to make that unit really fast. We're going to see what we can do. Um, problem. Once he's, he's just blinding cloud the cannon. Oh, blinding cloud Swarmers harassment. It's like almost smart, but it's really not... He abducts a pro behind the gateways as well. One little pro. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Oh my god. Okay. 
He's gonna try and rebuild, but I think this game is pretty much over. I think we could fast forward from here. Thank you for bearing with me through. Uh, I, I <laughs> the fastest Viper Rush apparently is also the stupidest Viper Rush. Um, oh my god. Normally his games are a little bit more. I would say. Um, it feels like there is a little bit of logic interwoven with the madness. This game is almost pure madness. The Ling Drop was cute. The Swarmos were cute. Everything past there has been utter nonsense from Santi. <laughs> it has been utter nonsense. Like, two-pronged Burrowed Swarmos Rest, also kind of smart. Not once they're killing it with Zealot DT and you've got no army to guard it. Like, at some point, you have to build some general fighting units and Overseer to see invisibility and deal with it. But uh, yeah, he's, I mean, he's done. There's, there's no way he can get back in this game. He's got two Swarmos, four Vipers. He's got nothing that fights. He's got one drone. So we're going to fast forward here just for, I don't know how long this game goes for. And I'll show you guys any action. The Lings are going to get cleaned up in the main. The Swarmos are being very annoying down here, just harassing that base. The Vipers are once again um, abducting units. That's not even in a cage, guys. That, 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 that's not effective. The Zealot DT finds his last base and that's going to be that. Santa Claus staying in until his very last dying breath. He says, oh, GG, well played, mate. The opponent says GG as well. I'm surprised they didn't get offensive just because of how crazy their opponent's strat was. Some people get really angry about that. Hats off to you, Montana. And well done for weathering the storm of ridiculousness. GG, well played. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to click on one of these other games on screen if you want to watch another video of some very out there and alternative strategies. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye and good night.